You're listening to The Cool Down with Blue, a brand new podcast brought to you by Console Pro News and Console Cool. Dog esports Perfect. and a little bit of pop culture mixed in there. Listen anywhere you want to YouTube, Spotify, Google Play, Apple, and anywhere else you listen to podcasts. Hello and welcome. Welcome, welcome to the podcast. My name is Real Blue TV. I'm your host. And uh yeah, this is uh this is the new podcast, Cool Down. Me, Blue. Uh <laughs> some of you who have listened to the Console Corner podcast, uh or uh by its other name, the Console Pro News uh podcast in the past, whether you listen to it on Spotify or, or YouTube. Uh, we had a lot of fun with it. Um, brought in a lot of guests. Had a bunch of interviews, players. Uh, mostly, we talked a lot about Paladins. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be a little different. So thank you for tuning into this one. If you've listened to any of my podcasts in the past, uh, if you're new here, welcome as well. Uh, we're going to be talking about. Rogue Company a lot podcast uh, each and every time. So I'm going to give you a little bit of rundown of the new podcast and the way we're going to be doing it or the way I'm going to be doing it. We're still going to have some interviews. We're still going to have people on the show. Uh, hopefully, if we can get these people on the show that we want to get on the show. Right now, no set recording times. Uh, so we're going to have to be a little lenient with that if we're going to have any interviews or anything like that. Right now... Uh, my plan is to have the show every day or five days a week during the week, so Monday through Friday, but that's asking a lot, especially at the beginning. I know uh tried to do the, the console corner show. We couldn't even get that going daily. We did for about two weeks, um, but when I'm doing the editing and the recording and the notes and watching all these esports to take the notes and do the analysis, it gets kind of overwhelming for just myself but um we know or some of you may know if you know who i am you know that i put in the work i put in the time i do the research and i try as hard as possible to get it all done for you guys too especially uh this is this is pretty much for you i mean i i watch i growing up i watched a lot of traditional sports and sports shows and i listened to a lot of sports radio um, primarily because that's what my father watched a lot of, you know, and I, you know, if, if I wasn't with my mother or my father, I was, you know, with my uncle and my aunt who babysat me as a child and he, my uncle really loved NASCAR. So I was exposed to like that kind of sport and those kind of sports shows for that specific sport which is different than watching like nfl shows and nba shows and then of course i got really into broadcasting in high school because doing the broadcasting for some high school basketball games when i wasn't playing uh, and then there was also the the point in time where i got really into sports shows that were about all sports pretty much kind of like the trending topics each and every day so like pardon the interruption which gather a lot of you guys have seen that in the console corner shows, stuff like that. But so I'm planning to do it Monday through Friday right now, though. Looking like we might do one a week, but I am going to try to do three weeks. So Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm thinking right now. Of course, they will be on Spotify like the last podcast was. So, um, oh, and by the way, if you didn't listen to those on Spotify, I had to actually delete them off of Spotify um, just so I wouldn't have to pay for another channel. So I just, I, I went the cheap option and deleted all the episodes on Spotify of the old podcast. So if you missed those, I'm sorry. Most of them are still on YouTube on the console pro news channel. If you want to check those out. Um, but anyways, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we're going to try and do that as much as possible. But if you don't have Spotify, we are working on getting it on Apple uh apple music or or itunes i don't even know anymore I, I don't pay attention to apple that much but whichever one has their podcasts that's what they're gonna be um we're also trying to get it on google play if you listen to podcasts on there highly doubt any of you listening do uh, as most of you probably have spotify for music so 
Uh, it's easier if you just listen to podcasts there. So we will be on Spotify for sure. We're trying to get Apple and Google Play as well. Uh, and they will also for sure be on YouTube. And there's a little a little thing about the YouTube that I need to, to tell you guys about. Um, I don't know if you guys really enjoyed, for those of you who listened uh, to the past podcasts on YouTube, it's just a, it's just a picture there. Um, so after doing some research and watching some other podcasts on YouTube, I realized that there are uh, these podcasts where even if it's a radio show, which this one is going to kind of become more of, uh, there is a camera uh, even if I don't look at the camera or, you know, even if the camera doesn't switch to different angles or anything like that, even if the screen doesn't have any lower thirds or any stats scrolling across the bottom, which eventually we can, we can upgrade to, uh, just right now, it's just going to be a flat camera of myself. Um, so you guys can see some movement on the screen, or listen to the podcast on YouTube. Um, but that's, that's the way it's going to go right now. But again, thank you all for joining. Uh, so we're going to be talking to some road company and it's Monday, it's November 30th. And there's three really big tournaments coming up. This is pretty much the beginning of real road company esports. I'm talking the pre before the, the pre-show before the pre-show, uh, pretty much. So, you know, there's been CMG tournaments for the past, what, since September. So the past two, two and a half months going on three now and a lot of a lot of changes have happened since then you know there was there's been a couple five hundred dollar tournaments on cmg there's been a couple i think four hundred dollars uh two fifties and and now you know there was hundred dollar tournaments every night now they're at the point where it's like fifty dollars every night if you win first place you get 40 bucks that's ten ten dollars per per player um so you would think that the scene is kind of dying and and um you know, there's a lot of toxicity on Twitter between players and, and the community and stuff like that. And I, uh, I don't know, man, it's, it's turning into like a, it doesn't have that, that natural high res feel as like Paladins or Smite did when it first started. Um, I think it's just because Rogue Company is not like those other two games. So there's a lot of people who are coming from games that are similar, like Call of Duty and stuff like that. So all these egos are, are clashing uh, amongst each other. But anyways, three big tournaments coming up. First one, so we'll go from the, you know, obviously the biggest we'll talk about last week, showdown for 8K. Um, but VVV, as in Victor, VVV World Lure Tournament, uh, it's kind of like the world lure. So I don't know if you guys ever heard of the world lure tournament for paladins. It was a community tournament and it was called world lure, all that nonsense. You get in game currency. If you that, and this one though, not in game currency, it's not ran by the same people either. And it's a little different. Originally there was going to be like, uh, teams that were based on where the players were from, kind of like a world cup kind of thing. Uh, and there was going to be a show match with all eight captains. That kind of fell out. Uh, I, I guess two teams pretty much dropped out early. Uh, whatever it may be. I don't, I don't really know the the specific details of what happened. But the show match didn't happen. The, the, the all eight captains match didn't happen. Uh, but December 11th. This is December 11th. I believe that's a Friday. Yeah, it is. It's a Friday. Um, so December 11th, I think it's 4 p.m. Eastern time. If you go to their Twitter, VVV underscore cup, C-U-P, that's V as in Victor three times. So VVV underscore cup. Um, they have a tweet out there about it. It's 4v4, demolition. It's pool play. Uh, so you're, you're guaranteed multiple matches. December 11th, 4 p.m. Eastern time. If you go to their Twitter and you see 1,600 don't be confused. They're European. The people running it are from Europe, so uh, they speak in military time, as you would say in, or just the U.S. I guess. Uh, so it's 4 p.m. Eastern, right? Five euros per player for the entry fee. So it's 20 euros. I don't know the conversion rate right now, uh, so you're gonna have to Google that. So 20 euros per team, but it's 250 guaranteed prize pool. So 
get some good practice in, especially uh, since the 8K is, you know, bouncing around that. I think they kind of planned this to be in between those matches. It's kind of after the first couple qualifiers too. So some of the top teams may use this as practice, gain a little bit extra cash while they're at it uh, since they probably already qualified and can't play in any remaining qualifiers at the time for the CMG. Next thing is the Rogue Rivals, which is the very next day. Rogue Rivals uh, on December 12th. This is a little different though. It's an invitational. Uh, this is the top four NA teams and top four EU teams. That's what it was supposed to be, top four in each. Um, but, you know, of course, being an invitational, some teams may, in the in the public's eyes, may not have granted themselves a top four team. You can actually take a look here. I'm going to pull up standings from uh, the standings from the Roco Showdown, which was phase one was all european and they could have played in it but i know they don't want to play with that ping so uh way way it happened was mostly eu team so uh the four teams that actually made the tournament pull it up here the four teams that made it for NA are SDK, Momentum, T1, and Morningstar. Uh, so Momentum, I think, is one of the teams. Yeah, it is. So Momentum, I don't know who's on Momentum. But STK, very good team. Talk about them a little bit. Ghost, which is uh, TKO Ghost or Ghost or Gogurt. Um, it's a guy from Paladin. So if, you, if you've been watching Paladin's console especially, past year and a half past two years you should know who ghost is you should also know who cool matt is uh and then we have bobster and gringo so bobster is the only one on this team that plays with keyboard i believe i believe gringo is a controller we know cool Matt and ghost are controllers um seems pretty disgusting i don't know where bobster and gringo came from originally they didn't come from paladins uh so i don't know what game they, they could have been caught that's the thing about Rogue Company too, is Rogue Company, we don't know who's going to really stand out. I mean, it, it Demolition is kind of like S&D. So you'll have some S&D stars come from Call of Duty. Uh, it's third person, so you'll have some teams that come from Last of Us uh, competitive. Uh, yes, there was a competitive Last of Us. It was actually pretty lit. Uh, you'll have some Gears of War players. Uh, you know, because you'll have those Last of Us Comp players you'll probably have some uncharted comp you'll have those uh gears of war players of course and then of course you'll you know the game has these ability characters these characters with different abilities and, and stuff like that so you'll see some some people who maybe failed at valorant as they would say um or maybe just don't really enjoy valorant as much as pro comp so you could see some players from there you could see some csgo players as well because they're used to that kind of uh, three lanes, you know, bomb plants and the sort of the S and D thing, but with the fact that you have to buy your weapons, there's these round purchase rounds. Um, there's the whole economy factor of it, and then of course you will have people who just come from Overwatch and, and Paladins and uh, Halo. Halo actually, there's a couple Halo players out there that have come in. Uh, one in particular I can think of is on a team. Called status quo his name is flame sword i think in the game it's og flame sword and i actually met this guy i actually met this guy uh it was back in dreamhack atlanta 2018 november when they had the world championship and i was on the desk for paladin's console and uh you know we were done with paladin's for the day there was no more matches i think it was a uh, saturday night and uh you know, Golden Boy. I, I, Golden Boy asked me because I was on the desk with Golden Boy. He came up to me. He's like, hey, what are, you, what are you about to do? Let's go watch some Halo. And I was like, all right, okay, all right. So we went over there, and of course, Golden Boy is Golden Boy, so he knew everyone. Everyone knew him. Uh, so we got to go, you know, backstage with some of the casters for Halo, and that was pretty awesome. But uh, he introduced me to Flame Sword, and they were doing. I think it was a Halo Two or Halo Three. I, I know, like Halo Five was the 
World Championship competitive Halo at the time. But they were doing like a 2v2 throwback tournament, and it had a bigger crowd than the actual like Halo 5 tournament or Grand Finals, right? That was already over. They already determined the winner of that. This was this 2v2 throwback tournament. Flamesword was on this team. They were in the finals. Flamesword was just, I mean, one of the best Halo players I've ever seen. I, th I think some people would agree he's one of the best Halo players of all time. Um, and whew, he was just, it was incredible watching this dude play this game. I know um, he probably it won't have that same feeling playing Rogue Company because, one, it's a different game. Um, and, two, you know, Flame Sword hasn't been playing this game that much as he did that old Halo that's been out for years. Um, but, man. It was it was truly incredible watching him play this game and and I think he you know, he's gonna pull up and he's gonna do some big things in the Rogue Company tournaments hopefully uh, but yeah so going back to the Rogue Rivals you know we got SDK Momentum T1 and Morningstar we know on who is on T1 so SDK T1 I think those are two of the top NA teams right now um, but there's some other teams creeping up in there we'll talk about them here in a second because we have the CMG. Uh, Rogue, Rogue Company Showdown Tournament as well. There's eight qualifiers. We'll get into that $8,000 prize pool uh, uh, qualifying qualifiers bracket. So we'll talk about that. Morningstar, though, I believe made it too. That is uh, Canny, which, I th which I'm pretty sure is short for Cannibal or Cannibals, whatever his name be, may be. Uh, Canny, we got Domes, and we have Highlight. I watched these three play. I th in a tournament in a CMG tournament on uh Saturday night and Sunday night. Mostly got to watch them Saturday night. They made it pretty far into the tournament. They ended up losing to uh T1, which by the way, that side of the bracket was pretty much stacked. Anyways, though, T1, I mean or excuse me, Morningstar, Domes, Highlight, Candy. We're going to see Domes on the fixer. Highlight is usually their entry or lurker, so you'll, you'll see him on the the chocks, the lancers. Um, and, and watching that tournament on Saturday night after they lost, you know, they were kind of talking on stream about some things and he doesn't really like highlight doesn't really like the chalk or maybe he just didn't like it on that map in that position they were playing. But, uh, he plays a lot of Lancer I ended up watching a little bit of his rank stream afterwards too. And he plays a lot of Lancer. So, uh, look for him to be making some plays and then. Canny, I can't remember specifically what they were playing, but they're more so the the support uh, or the support or the uh, IGL. We know we know Domes is op slash support with the fixer, and that's going to be a big deal because fixer uh, noticing watching these tournaments, top teams all play fixer as they should be. Uh, but there was a there was a team there was a team that didn't run fixer on Saturday and they lost, but then. Sunday night, they were running a fixer, and they ended up taking six rounds off of T1 or eventually losing 7-6. And that was uh, PMP, which was Zeal. Uh, Zeal was taken, I think is his game name, if you aren't familiar. Zeal, Spring Hour, La Hunter, or LA Hunter. Uh, I don't know if it's LA Hunter or La Hunter, uh, but we should call him Hunter. And then Korea, Korea 10. Um, and Korea 10 actually was the fixer player. And... On one of their better maps, they took him to 7-6. Or on one of T1's better maps, took him to T6. So it's pretty uh, pretty huge for them. But uh, I don't know. I don't know about the Rogue Rivals. Morningstar, Momentum. Again, I don't know who's on Momentum. Uh, I think Morningstar deservedly should be in this top four right now. I think that they're playing well. They beat STK on Saturday. I believe, uh, on Windward 2, which is huge for STK. Talk about that in a little bit because Sunday night, there was a best of three tournament uh, after the best of one tournament. And STK ended up winning that tournament against T1, 7-6 on Windward and 7-6 on Lockdown, which are STK's two worst maps by far right now and are the – are two of T1's best maps, especially Lockdown. That's their best map, I think, right now, uh, which is weird because not a lot of teams are electing to play uh, Lockdown. Um, I mean, you see a lot of Icarus. You see a lot of High Castle. And you see a lot of Skyfell, especially in the EU. You see a lot of Icarus and Skyfell, uh, especially in these uh, 
best of threes and stuff like that. I mean, the Roco showdown, for example, was best of threes and best of five. So you saw the teams banning maps and trying to get the maps that they want to play. And you saw a lot of sky fell, a lot of sky fell. Uh, but I think T1 deserves to be there. STK, of course, both those teams. I think those are the top two NA teams right now. Again, I don't know who's on momentum, so I can't. I mean, I, I can kind of tell you who's not on momentum because I've got a couple rosters here. I mean, I've got like two or three teams that have no fourth. I've got a couple teams that only have two players listed on them. Uh, so it's kind of difficult to determine who is where, especially so early in the scene like this, you know, they're breaking up. People are leaving teams after losing one scrim. Um, and I said this in Paladins, and I'm going to say this here. Scrims, winning scrims does not matter. Okay? Scrims are practice, man. You don't, you don't go to, like, basketball practice and you have a scrimmage and expect to win every single time. And if you don't, there's nothing to work on. Uh, there's always something to work on, on on, and always something to improve, whether you win the scrim or not. Uh, so it doesn't matter. But talk about the EU teams. So yeah, SDK, T1, Morningstar, I think those are three of the top teams in NA right now. They, I think that's good invitations for three of the four teams. Again, momentum, they might... And, you know, they might be deserving of this invitation, but at the same time, I don't know who's on their team. So we'll see. Talk about the EU side of Rogue Rivals now. Four invited teams for them are Rosie's Ants, Team Humble, RRXD, and EU on top. Now, I've been told EU on top, and I've seen them play on Saturday as well. They won the, the best of one CMG against T1. Team's disgusting. It's uh, Pulsa. Pulsa. Flopadopolis, again, if you watch Paladins, you'll know who that is. Emis, uh, and Exo. So Exo, Slop, they played on Orglis in the Roco Showdown. That team broke up. Players left. Someone's computer broke, whatever it may be. Um, whatever, whatever happened, happened. Now they're on EU on top. Emis played in Roco Showdown, and he was on the Frenchies. That was a good team. Top four team over there. Top three team. Top two team, actually. They beat RRXD, beat Astroth Esports. So they lost to Orglis in the final. So Emis, best player on that Frenchie squad as well. So he moves into that. And then you have Palza, which all around good player uh, from the EU side of things. So EU on top, I think, is the best team in EU right now. So I think they deserve to be it's invitational. Now, RRXD was the number two seed coming into the playoffs for Roco Showdown, um, but they kind of fell short. They came in third place. Um, they did take some rounds off of Frenchies, I and they did take some rounds off of uh, Orglis at the time, which half of them are now on EU on top. I think RRXD is still good. I think it's uh, they've got... I believe check their sked their roster excuse me it's ronberg delzy smarty and reels i think smarty's a really good player that's an old paladins player too I, and he actually switched from controller to uh keyboard uh for this game uh, it's pretty interesting to see him play reels i think he's a good player too i think he used to play with exo very early stages of the game ronberg delzy pretty good players as well i think delzy is probably the best player out of all four of them could be uh Marty or reels though all three of them are pretty evenly good. Um, but RXD, would I give them the invite? Of course. I, I still, you know, they made Roko Showdown playoffs. They're a top four team. They were the number two seed. They ended up getting third in the tournament. Still, I think they're a top four team. I'll give them this invite. Now, the other two teams, this is where uh, the community kind of really called out the people who were choosing these rogue rivals. Uh, Rosie's Ants, Team Humble. I don't think they're as big. But again, we really don't know who's on these rosters uh, to this day. I mean, things could have changed since the Roco showdown. And if you want to know, Team Humble came in. They finished 15th in the Roco showdown. Rosie Zants finished 27th. Uh, so Rosie Zants, I think, only played one day. They won one, lost one, gained five points, weren't, didn't play again, I think. Uh, and 
Team Humble went two and four, two wins, four losses. They had 14 points. So they scored more points than Rosie's Dance because they played more games. They played more weeks, uh, more matches. So I don't really know who's on these teams. I don't know if they've changed anything since then. Uh, I, I don't know. There's a, there's a lot of teams that were very upset about it. I know uh, Q Roco was very upset about it on Twitter. Um, again, man. I think this tournament will... It, it's pool play. And then the top team from each group... It, it's group play. Each team will play the other three teams in their groups two times. Top team in each group will face each other for the finals. Uh, so, you know, we'll see each team play each other twice and we'll get a really good uh, sample size of these two teams and, and see what they can do against some really good teams too. If I had to guess though, Rogue Rivals, I think, I don't know, because I think the winner will come out of EU overall for the event and I think it'll be EU on top. I think RRXD will be able to beat Rosie Zantz and Team Humble from the information that I have currently uh you know we'll see when the games start who's actually on these teams and then we can you know make a a new estimate after that but till then i think rxd and eu on top will be fighting for that spot to get out of that group and i think eu on top will take it i don't think they will beat whoever comes out of the na side and the na side I think Morningstar will put up a fight. I don't know who's on momentum, so I can't say anything about them yet. And I think that SDK and T1 will go back and forth to determine who will come out of that group. And the winner of that will have a tough time against the EU team. Uh, granted, they could be either one of those two teams. Either one of those three teams could beat EU on top. But I just think that EU on top... Two of those players have won the Roko Showdown. They won the tournament uh, two days ago on Saturday night against T1. I just think they're more prepared, more ready. Um, especially if, if you go back and you look at those games and you see that you know, the, the EU team. I've actually got some uh, good notes here. The EU teams, they love, they love playing Lancer. Or excuse me, not playing Lancer. They play a lot of Ronin. They think the knife is a free kill. I mean, if you look at the other abilities of some characters, um, you know, with Lancer, you've got the speed boots, uh, with the quiet boots. Uh, a lot of these these characters, you have things that slow things down. You know, you have Vi, which is being played a lot throughout those Vi poisons. It kind of forces someone out of an area or makes forces them to back up. And then you have, uh, you know, trench barbed wire, which kind of does the same thing. And then you have Ronan, who literally can just throw a knife on the ceiling, on the floor, on the wall, you can shoot it to explode it. Uh, I can stop flanks, you know, things like that. It's an, it's insane. They play a lot of Ronan, um, but Ronan has to be that lurker slash entry. And the NA teams they love to run lancers, and they love to run those lurker lancers, and they're kind of voided out. Versus NA teams because they know to look for it. And that is the, the secret sauce that could take down some EU teams. The EU teams don't really have the top teams. They don't really have those good lurking Lancers. They have entry Lancers. But because the Ronin is better in their opinion, the entry will just play that Ronin instead. So they think that that's just a better option. For uh, so, the, I mean... Put it this way. I think your lurkers slash entries are going to be the best players in the world. That's going to determine the best players in the world. Yeah, we're going to love the snipes from the op players, but the lurkers, they have to utilize their entire kit. They have to know when to lurk, when to get the entry frag. Uh, you know, they, they have to make plays. That's their job, to make plays. Um, and, you know, we'll see Lancers, Ronins, Chocks, things like that for the entries. So I think those will determine the best players in the world. Uh, and it's already, already done. Already starting to do that with players like Nex, XO. I'm not saying these are some of the best players in the world. I'm saying they're one of the top players right now, and they could transition being some of the top players in the world because of that position 
and that role and what it's going to force them to have to do and how they're going to have to adapt to each other. Uh, but then we have the, that's the Rogue Rivals, December 12th. Remember, VVV World Lure Tournament or the the World Tournament, 250 euro grand prize, five euro per player entry fee, 20 per team. That's December 11th. We've got Rogue Rivals, eight teams invited, four EU, four NA. Uh, that's group play. Each team plays each other two times. Top team comes out of each group. They play each other for the finals. Rogue Rivals, Invitational. That's December 12th. Uh, and then actually starting tonight, we can give you all the dates as well. Today, day one, November 30th, 7 p.m., we have uh, the CMG Rogue Company Showdown, $8,000 tournament, right? Um, I believe it's $8,000 tournament for the, the actual bracket. In order to get into the bracket, you have to qualify, right? It's cross-platform. Uh, 4v4, best of three. These aren't best of ones. Single elimination. And there's eight days of qualifiers. Let me know if I get this right. Day one is today, November 30th. Then you have December 2nd, December 5th, December 6th, December 8th, December 10th, December 12th, and December 13th. All of these days. By the way, the uh, Rogue Rivals tournament is on December 12th as well uh so if you want to watch both uh granted these the eu team this is the C, the eight thousand dollar qualifiers are for north america only at this time they do have eu coming later at later dates we'll talk about that as we get closer to that uh as well but you know you say oh two of these are on the same day you know they could calm down calm down day seven so that's the seventh day of qualifiers december 12th which is the same day as rogue rivals rogue rivals Noon to 5 p.m. roughly uh, Eastern time. And then the qualifiers, this is a Saturday. The qualifiers start at 5 p.m. Uh, for the 8K. Uh, but, I mean, there's only four NA teams in the Rogue Rivals. And, like I said, STK. Uh, two teams qualify on each day of qualifiers for these qualifying tournaments. So, I mean, if STK and Tier 1 and Morningstar and even whoever momentum is don't qualify for this tournament in the first six qualifiers something's wrong something is wrong that's all i have to say so they should be fine um if you want to watch both though they're back to back or should be back to back um of course you know when rogue rivals is ending around five you're gonna have that starting soon screen start 8k fine you should be able to watch both uh, but again, that's November 30th, which is tonight, day one. So make sure you watch that. Check it out. Uh, you can actually just follow Rogue Company on uh, – follow the CMG Rogue Company Twitter for updates of of where to watch the stream for that. There is going to be a stream. It's going to be casted, all of that. Uh, so it's CMG underscore Rogue, which is their Twitter. Or you can go to checkmategaming.com. We'll Probably have it up right there. And their pinned tweet is actually the sign-up page for the 8K if you haven't signed up already. Uh, so the way it works is you sign up for one of the qualifiers. If you're a top two team in the qualifier, you will qualify for the main bracket. Main bracket is for the 8K. If you win the qualifier, you get the $250, uh, $250 prize for each qualifier. So some extra cash to put in your pocket if you win. Um, and, you know, you can't just make finals, be a top two team and kind of throw it. Um, you know, because that's important. If you win, you get a higher seed. I would, I would suggest, you know, doing your best, of course. Um, but you know, I would expect the top two teams tonight in the first one to be the one seed and the two seed. The winner of tonight's would be the one seed in the main bracket. So I that's how it would be. Uh, so 16 teams. So there's eight qualifiers, top two teams in each one qualify into the main bracket where it'll be the, uh, I believe the next week. Next Saturday and Sunday after the 12th and 13th, whatever days that is. And it will be main bracket those two days, $8,000 on the line right there. Uh, so that's very important. Uh, but we take a look at some of the teams that we think we'll see. Of course, we'll see Shoot to Kill, SDK, Ghost, Cool, Bobster, Gringo. They're playing very well right now. Close my notebook. I'm going to talk a little bit about them. Talked about how they uh, – they're not very good on um, Windward or Lockdown, but they were able to do it last night against T1. 
it was really good on those maps, especially lockdown. So they kind of cleaned it up. They had a uh, let's see here. Game one, SDK, they ran the anvil on windward in defense instead of the trench. So a little bit of uh, a quick slip up for them. And we've seen a lot of people, a lot of teams starting to transfer away or, or try to transgress themselves away from the trench and move into that anvil. You still get the trophies with anvil um, and you get a little bit better cover with the shield where you can do shield diffuses on defense. You can do shield plants on offense. We don't really see it on offense as much. But I mean, this is new for the NA. This is new. This is new for NA. They're not used to seeing these characters. If you go back and you watch the uh, Frag Outs stream when they were they first put Anvil into their uh, comp in one of the tournaments, I think it was Saturday night. You you see Nash like, oh my god, why have I like I've never used this character before? And he was like, this is my first time playing this character, and he has to do it in a, a, a you know, tournament game. Um, they did win that though. They won that match. I, I don't know if they they didn't win that tournament. They lost in the. Anyways, you know, if you go back to Roco Showdown, even week two, week one, even, uh, you'll see teams like Astroth Esports when they play offense. Uh, you can see them using. Actually, if you go back early in the Roco Showdown, you'll see them using anvil on both offense and defense for the shield diffuse and shield plants. They were doing that beautifully, right? And that worked for them. They try to change it up moving forward. And then you have Mr. Brady, who was on uh, Frenchies as well. They were using the trench on offense, getting the bomb plants and stuff like that. But Astroth Esport, they were a little bit ahead of their time. I think people said, oh, you should use trench, blah, 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 blah. Still using trench on defense, but on that offensive side, Anvil would be the bomb carrier, and they were getting these quick plants off, especially if they were playing maps like Icarus or uh, Factory. They did it on Factory, too. It didn't even matter which bomb site they went to on Factory. They'd get it done. They like to favor A, though, with the Anvil plant, uh, and they like to favor, I believe, uh, A on Icarus, too, the shield plant in off the alleyway there. So I don't know, man. They'd shut off alley on defense, too, for bomb defuses. All you have to do is cover the backside where long get, where long meets yellow. So I mean, they were playing anvil. Uh, they were playing anvil before most other teams even realized. Uh, you know, you're still getting the trophy. Uh, and also anvils get anvils LMG man. You upgrade that for the extended mag, and you just have 90 bullets in the clip, and you just don't need to. Uh, but. Yeah, SGK, really good team. They started to run some anvil. They had really quick uh, defense retakes or really quick site retakes on defense. That was what really helped them, especially on maps like Windward, which they were terrible on. I think they're like, from me watching them, they're like one in five on Windward. Um, especially when they were on offense, they started going towards A. They were... They're planting pretty quickly, and they were able to secure dominance in the pit area behind. And that's a big thing, you know. A lot of people uh, who are trying to get into rogue esports, they don't understand map positioning and what parts of the maps you need to take control of. And STK recognizes what part of Windward on a plant they need to take control of. They did it pretty well, even though they did lose some of those fights and the retakes were good from T1. They were still able to take what they needed to take. They weren't just able. They just weren't able to hold it. So a little bit of predictable attacks too. We saw Nex being able to call out their strats before the plane drop. So they've just got to clean some things up like that. T1 also. Nex, Nash, Gronky, Frag out. Uh, Gronky, by the way, uh, coming from a game that's also third person, Fortnite. Not a lot of people uh, thought Fortnite would be big fraggers. We see like Enzo and we see uh, Gronky, who I think is the better of the two right now. Uh, then we have Morningstar, who's probably going to show up in the 8K Canny Domes highlight. They were playing with Truancy, I think is how you say his name. Uh, and he was doing pretty well for them. So if that's their fourth, then that's looking like a good fourth for them. Uh, and they'll, they should be in the 8K tournament. Uh, another team that should be showing up in the 8K is F4L, I think they're going by. And what I've been told, this is Moho, Holiday, and NetJ. Uh, Moho is pretty good. I know he was on the team with Nash, Gronky, and Enzo at the beginning of like the the scene with on no comp. They were pretty much winning everything. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know if Moho's still bragging like that. I mean, 
that was back when uh, Trench was played every game and on any map, on any side. Uh, and we saw a lot of uh, slow rolling defense and slow rolling offense. So didn't really see a lot of its uh, fast action stuff. So see how that goes. And then also we have uh, Net J on that team, supposedly, who is really, really good. Um, I think they're, I think Net J is a top player right now alongside Holiday and Moho. So that should be an interesting team. Don't know who their fourth is, but we'll see what happens there. Uh, I have another team that I think will go in there. It's, I don't know their name, but on here I was told we like set plays. That's Saint, Colt, Dolores, and Sifter, I think. Um, I might have gotten these names wrong, but I know who Saint and Colt are. I think they're pretty good players. I think this team might be able to make the main bracket, just not early on, considering you know you have SDK, Tier 1, or I guess some um, other teams. Of course, we have Status Quo with Flame Sword Promotion, Fearless, QKSP. I don't know the other three guys, but one of the other three guys is the one who hit me up and said, hey, this is our team. Uh, but I know who Flame Sword is, and uh, that, that might be a, an interesting team to watch if you want to watch them. And then there's a team that doesn't have a fourth yet. They're still trying out active fourths from what they told me. But Negligent. Detox and Young Mango Lord. I don't have a team name for them either, so you'll have to watch out for rosters. But those are three uh, former East uh, Pro Gears players, so they could make a splash in the scene as well. Uh, and then we have what I've seen is uh, Goxley. He's been practicing with Jay Bacardi and Dragon Dragon Ox. I think is how you say his name. Uh, they don't have a fourth. They were playing with Elvin Calderon, which, by the way, if you are still looking for players and you need someone, Elvin hit them up, doing pretty well. Um, so that might be another team. Another team to look out for, again, is the PMP. Deal, Spring Hour, La Hunter, and Korea. I think they were doing some pretty good things lately, um, especially when they have Korea on the fixer. Of course, every team should have a fixer right now. He's insane. Another team is uh, Locked In, which J-Grav, Lossie, and I think Donnie. I don't know where Paid Boy is. I think Paid Boy was on this team early on. I don't know why he's not on the team anymore. I wasn't given his name for this roster, just those three. So maybe he is their fourth. I saw Locked In was playing in the CMG last night and on Saturday. Didn't see. Uh, I don't remember who their fourth was. I just noticed that it wasn't Paid Boy at the time. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, there's some other teams that we might see show up that we haven't seen in a while. I mean, we have the last of us kids. Um, uh, I think they called themselves resistance or t gods or something like that. That was Natex, Exodus, Zeus, uh, Nick's legends, legend. And I think, uh, Diaz King. So they could show up since it's an $8,000 tournament. I don't know where they are. We can also see some people come over from paladins. Um, I know dethroner. Roman, Dez, and I forgot who their fourth would be that they would run with. I think those three are going to team up. They're going to play some, some qualifiers and see if they can get into the main bracket. Um, I don't know where Maestro is. I, I think Maestro is EU too, so I can't, can't really remember. Um, Oni Channers, though. That would be Inert, Agro, Somtap, Karma, and Ozone. I don't know if that team's going to show up for this. I know... Karma was kind of moving back towards, uh, he was playing some Apex and then he was kind of moving back into uh, Splitgate, I think. So I don't know. Agro's been kind of MIA on the game. Enert, I don't know where he's been. Somtap's been pretty active on Twitter, on my feed, but I haven't really seen him doing anything in the game right now. So we'll see. Uh, Passion Squad, that's a, a, a T3 team if I had to call it, but still. Still better than a lot of these pickup teams that are coming out of random places right now. That's Priest, Fatboy, Nate, Jay High, and Trash. I don't know where they are. Uh, but we could see some of these other Paladins kids too. But Paladins World Championship is coming up. So I don't know if we'll actually see them. That is us. You know, we, we might not see Satisfies, Mitt Payne, Skeppy, Trenzic, Legacy, uh, Wonderful, you know, any of those kids. We might not see them. Um, I'd like to see them. I think those are good players. I don't know if they're great at Rogue Company. They did play in a couple CMGs before. They made it pretty far as boogeymen, I think. So we should be able to 
to gauge how good they'll be in this game. But again, they have a world championship for uh, for uh, Paladins coming up this week. So I don't know if they'll be as active for this. But that's why there's eight qualifiers. So they should have some time. But yeah, that's pretty much all I got for today. Again, I mean, we're going to try and do this three days a week. It's going to be more like radio show style. So, I mean, me talking and blabbing. But, uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of tournaments coming up, a lot of good tournaments. Uh, so, if you don't watch them, I mean, uh, excuse me, if you don't play in them, you should at least try to watch them. I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty excited. And we still have Roco Showdown Phase 2 coming up sometime in the future. They're probably just waiting for the 8K to be over with so that the you know there's not too much distraction. Um, the Rogue Rivals is happening. The VVV Cup is happening. Ah, man. So much Rogue Company happening. I'm so excited. Um, but let me know what you guys think. Who do you think is going to win the qualifier? Who do you think is going to win the 8K? From the teams that we know of right now. Who do you think is going to win Rogue Rivals out of the eight teams that are in it? Let me let me know. If you're watching this on YouTube. Make sure you guys you know put it in the comments. Don't forget to like the video. Uh, if you're listening to this on Spotify, hit me up on Twitter. At RealBlueTV. No E in blue. So it's you know, Real B-L-U TV. Hit me up. Let me know what you guys think. And uh, if you have any questions or any topics that you'd like me to answer or talk about in the next episode, let me know on Twitter. No? Comment on the video. It's all the same, all the standard things you hear from every single content creator you've ever listened to. Uh, but I'm, I'm more the, the, I'm the analyst. I'm the analyst content creator. I'm doing this. Whatever you guys want to talk about, I'll talk about it. As long as it's related to road company. But again, thank you everyone for listening. I love you all. Keep grinding. No matter what happens, wake up, drink some water, smile, set a goal, go crush that goal. No matter what gets in your way. Later, everyone. Hey, thanks for taking the time to listen to the podcast. My name is Real Blue TV. You can check me out on Twitter at Real Blue TV. No E, Blue. It's pretty much the same name for all my other socials too if you want to follow me on instagram youtube even twitch i stream a lot of gameplay myself not very good but we can talk a lot about esports and some more rogue company competitive while we're there at the same time also don't forget to download my new app game on app currently not available for, for ios but it's coming soon don't forget game on on the amazon app store or the google play store if you're a mobile gamer and you want to share your clips with the world, this is the place to be and the place to do it. Make sure you give me a follow on there as well. At Real. Don't forget, everyone. Keep grinding. Never give up. And set some goals and go crush them. Until next time. See you guys later.